So we are going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly about Diablo 4 Season 2. And there is a lot here to cover. First, I do want to start with the good, but there is some things that really de definitely disturb me and bothers me about what's going on right now uh, that I'd like to see change. But they did a major jump from where they were in Season 1 to where they are now. The devs have definitely stepped it up, and I want to at least honor that, what they've done right, because they have done an incredible job of making the game fun again. I did not expect that going into the season, but this they definitely nailed. So when we look at the new mechanics of the season, we got some really cool stuff. We have the Blood Harvest, which is my absolute favorite add to this game. This is where you you basically are doing a lot of the the bloods, getting the potent bloods and fighting blood seekers and just a lot of the like what's the season theme is going on in the Blood Harvest. You also get great resources, you get great loot. It's just a cool place to be in early game. And you're in early game and you're not waiting for end game to get access to this. It is similar to the hell tides, which I think was most people's favorite thing to do uh, until it became not very valuable for experience and you weren't leveling your glyph. So in the end game, instead of being able to do this thing that people really enjoyed, there just wasn't a lot of reason. Once you got base resources for leveling your gear and stuff, they were out. But in this blood harvest, as long as you're skipping the campaign is available to you right away, which to me is a much better method for leveling your early uh, classes, getting a ton of great gear, uh, getting the potent um, potent blood, getting the keys that you'll need, which will make a really amazing like jump. When you jump into world tiers, those keys transfer. You keep them between blood harvest. They don't just delete everything that you had in there. And then you can go jump in, take those keys, run around, grab the chest, and just fill up your you know your bag with a bunch of sacreds. And so right away when world tier three, and the same ancestrals when you're in world tier four. But being able to do that gets you up to speed really fast with your gear so you can actually handle what's going on in the world tier and start truly leveling and getting your build into a place that you need it. So that was just, I, I love that ad. I love having something to do right from the go. I like that we were immediately in the theme. Um, it just, I think it's overall, it's a huge win and it's things I'd like to see continually in any Diablo 4 season. Now, the, on top of that, the potent bloods that you get there are, a made, are how you upgrade your vampiric powers. Vampiric powers, they did also a great job there. They're not like completely game breaking, but the fact that you get access to things that feel almost like uniques in the very early of the game and you get to choose them and, and the gambling element of which one am I going to get? How do I unlock them? Do I level them up? Do I keep upgrading them? And the upgrade values, like when you actually upgrade one, it was well worth it. So getting a ton of the, uh, the potent blood and just kind of gambling for the best of three choices to keep getting those vampiric powers in and then keeping them equipped and making sure you have the right packs for the ones that you, you want to run with, I thought was a really great uh, thing. And I think we're going to find some crazy combinations and all kinds of stuff that are going to just make whole new builds uh, for this season that we're not going to, you know, that we have not seen yet. And so I can't wait to see what comes out of all of it. But I do love the vampiric powers. They are crazy good. Now, the other thing they did is they finally made a real end game. And the reason they, that this is happening is because they added bosses. The bosses now drop special gear, so there's a lot of reason to go after them. The gear that they do drop, even if they're not dropping their special uniques that they can drop for each of the classes, they can drop just much higher level of gear than when you're pretty much anywhere else. What I noticed with bossing, it was a good like 30, 40 point like item levels over what I was seeing with my regular gear. And so there's a lot of reason to be doing those. And how they worked it out, to get to a boss, you have to unlock it. You have to have the right resources which the resources for different bosses come from different places. So now there is reasons all the way through the game to be doing hell tides, to be doing nightmare dungeons, to be doing blood harvest, to be doing um, the tree of whispers, doing every part of it because you get at things that help unlock the bosses. And so now we have a serious game. Like even after in end game, even if you're not at 100, you can start going after the bosses, getting crazy gear, building incredible um, builds that you weren't able to. And because they lowered how long it takes to get to level 100, you actually feel like you're getting pretty strong pretty fast. And so I think this finally gives it that there is now a reason not only to go to level 100, but once you're there to really start hammering on the bosses and just taking your build to a whole new level. And I think that is an incredible add and much needed for a game of this size. So one last thing I do wanna add on this good list, and it's a quality of life thing that I think is really needed. And that is the ability to actually have a search filter for your stash. So before it was just a pain in the ass. I had to spend a lot of time kind of organizing everything and making sure all my chess pieces are here and aspects I'm going to use over here. And maybe I need to go break those down so I don't forget them. It's just a pain in the ass. And so now you go in, you search, say I'm looking for might. I want to put my aspect on one of my items. I search might, 
and it immediately shows me on screen, it highlights the ones. And then in the tabs above, it actually shows the numbers of how many of things that show the word might uh, on those items. So now I can go and check and see if I have a perfect roll. If I have a crap roll that I can just break down, you know, it just made my sorting the bag. And honestly, I've been a little bit just because of how crazy I was with my bagging before. I've just been dumping things and then doing this search to find the things that I actually need. And it has been absolutely incredible. So now the bad. Now, this is more not really it's bad, but it's more annoying than anything, because I do want to cover what I think is absolutely horrible, <laughs> the downright ugly of what's going on. But the bad really came down to one primary thing for me, and that is Nightmare Dungeons. I don't know what happened, but as soon as I got to Nightmare Dungeons, I was having a blast. I was running through. As soon as I got to Nightmare Dungeons, I had a bit of a, an issue. And I don't know if it was just like some PTSD from playing it so much, but as soon as I had that, man, my system just like crashed. I was just like, this is not fun. And I, I've played a lot of Nightmare Dungeons from the beginning, from the betas, from season one, uh, multiple classes through all of those. I have had my fair share of Nightmare Dungeons and I am good. I don't think I need them, <laughs> you know, and then I realized, man, I've got to level up my glyphs and that's the only way to do it. So I'm kind of stuck doing that. And my sister's just like, I had to take a break. I had to just take a walk because it was a little rough. And I don't think that we need elements. And maybe that's not what everybody else feels. Um, but for me, that was really tough to see. It's like I I'm having this great experience and I'm just like almost like I guess they slammed into a wall. <laughs> um, I did figure it out because knowing that it's connected to the bosses does help me a lot to go, okay, cool. Then I can at least do it for a reason because I'm going to go after bosses. I'm going to get some new unique gears, uh, gear that I, I haven't played with yet. And I'm going to be able to do some crazy builds. So that, that'll make it worth it. And so it did get me over that hurdle. Uh, it did not feel much faster in experience, uh, in leveling for me personally, even though they swear that it is much faster. Maybe it's just faster overall for the whole game. Um, but, uh, that was, yeah, that was what I think is actually bad in what's going on. Um, nothing else this outside of that. They, I mean, they fixed the horse. They did, I mean, they did a lot of really cool things. I actually should, that should be in good. I don't even know why I didn't mention that, but the horse, the horse is incredible. Everything we wanted the horse to be like you jump on it and you run to the thing you want to, or being able to jump on quickly between packs. If you need to, if a, you're in an earlier game and there's like the packs are basically spread out, you can actually jump on your horse and then do your power move off and then kill them and then go to the, you know, run to the next or get a horse onto the next pack. Super cool. But that I, I digress a little bit there. So the bad is Nightmare Dungeon. Now, I want to get cover the thing that I think is actually the downright ugly. And it's just something that I think has been carried over from how they have treated the launch and so, so on. It almost feels like this is the first season that they actually started listening to us, like really listening to us. And I don't know if that was just the delay from when they first launched the game. They kind of had season one already in place. And so they did little patch jobs. And that's really the best they could do. But the morale was super low with the community. And it was strange to me because this is not something that we were used to with Diablo and or with Blizzard in general. And I think the Blizzard of old would have done this completely different. We look at even just the launch of season two right now. They launched they had the launch time. It was all set. People knew ahead of time. Tons of people were ready to play. They were excited to like try the season because it sounded like things were going to be significantly better. And then there was a massive crash and bug or whatever and this it wasn't going to be open for three hours blizzard of old when they made a promise they kept a promise they either said nothing <laughs> i mean sometimes that would be like they hinted that it might be a game in a few years <laughs> and people were like well just tell me which year <laughs> and they would not do it and i think that even though people were irritated about it at the time they're like just tell us when the release is going to be i want to know when my the next game is coming um it did create a certain amount of trust with the community as a whole and I think this did not help keep that, that trust in place. And we're seeing that in a lot of places, because I really do. When I look at early stuff in how they treated the early game, the interviews with the dev team, it almost looked like they, they were like, yeah, yeah, we get your problems. We hear them. Nah, we'll deal with those later. And season two was the first where I really felt that they were like, we're going to do something. We're hearing you. We're doing it right now. <laughs> and we are going to make this game better. And I want to see that because if the morale doesn't increase, we don't get the right number of players really to come in and give, I think, the correct feedback. Now, there is kind of a double edged sword here. If too few people come, that's a great sign for Blizzard that they've got to do something right. If not enough people come, though, we don't get the feedback in the different segments. So if the only people who are playing this are going to be hardcore people that are or people that are running hardcore or doing challenges or um, love speed running or whatever, those are the only people playing the game. That's the only feedback coming back in. 
and all the casuals get burnt out, then the game is going to be extremely lopsided. And I really would like to see a balanced game. My, my, my real desire here is that Diablo 4 becomes an incredible game. It's a good game, but I think it should be incredible. And with the size of the team, I think that they, that really should have been what we got. And so for all those like loyal Diablo 4 fans out there and everybody that just wanted to enjoy a great game, Blizzard really does need to handle this. And I think season two is a great first step, but they need to address that directly. They basically have changed the whole perspective perspective that we have with the company and with the game. And that's not cool. If you are playing season two overall, I did have a blast and it is crazy enjoyable. Anybody who is a Diablo fan should at least check out the early game stuff. The storyline that they added was really cool. The vampires are just a neat effect. Try blood harvest for yourself. Play, you know, go hunt down some of the blood seekers. Uh, and if you are ready to do that, definitely check out these guides. This one, I cover vampiric powers, kind of the early mechanics, what you need to know. And this one, we're going to go deep into blood harvest and what you get to do in that area and why they're so valuable.